Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives. The only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening. And now, enjoy the show. CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. I'm here to guide you on an excursion throughout which I believe you'll be very glad to have a guide, for the way is treacherous and horror waits around each turning. Hi, Archie. Uh, let me have a cup of coffee, will you? Hey, did you ever hear of anybody getting a free ride on the Long Island Railroad? Well, <laughs> you're looking at the man who did it. The conductor walked right past me. I had my ticket out there ready for him to punch, and he walked right past me. Uh, how about that coffee? Archie. Archie. You act as if you can't even see me. Our mystery drama, The Master Computer, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Field and Farrington and stars Robert Dryden and Augusta Dabney. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Loneliness is a burden we've all borne in one degree or another. It throws us back upon our own personal resources, which, in the ordinary course of things, are sufficient to sustain us. But there's nothing ordinary about the loneliness we're going to deal with here, even though two people share it. This is loneliness, intolerably multiplied. Grace and Harry Clayton are returning from a pleasant summer vacation, but they're exhausted. They've driven in one day from Opaquit, Maine, to Newton, Long Island, the small suburban town in which they live. You know something, Grace? Mm. I never realized how beautiful Newton is. Mm. Well, I just want to crawl into the house and collapse. Oh, I hope I can make it to the bed. Uh, one stop first. I want to pick up the mail at the post office and tell them they can start regular delivery again tomorrow. Well, you better hurry, then. The post office closes at 5.30. I'll make it, I think. Oh, Harry. Do you dread going back to work in the morning? <laughs> no, not really. Vacations have to end sometime. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they wouldn't be vacations, would they? <laughs> oh, good. Parking right in front of the post office. Uh, you wake my car. I won't be a minute. I think that man's getting ready to lock up. You better hurry. I'll catch him. Uh, now, hold it a minute, will you? Just a couple of seconds. I, I want to pick up some mail you've been holding for me. It won't take a second. Do you hear what I said? Well, you could answer me at least. Well, I'll be damned. Why do people have to be so damn rude? He looked right through me. You'd think I wasn't even there. Well, I can pick up the mail in the morning. Come on, let's go on home. No, that's not the point. He might at least have had the courtesy to answer me. Oh, I guess he was just doing his job. They do close at 5.30. So, would it kill him to say, sorry, mister, I can't let you in? Oh. Hey, uh, you want to stop somewhere for a bite to eat? You don't feel like cooking this evening, do you? <laughs> I don't feel like stopping either. We'll open a can of soup. This bread's moldy, Grace. Oh, well, I'm sure there's some kind of crackers in the box. Oh, I've got just about enough energy to eat some soup and make one phone call. What phone call? Oh, I thought I'd call the kids at the camp. This evening? What for? 
Oh, I don't know, really. I, I, just, I just feel like talking to them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've been worried about Benny's batting average myself. Hey, you go ahead and make the call. I'll heat the soup. I suppose it's silly, but I just don't feel like any. Hello, this is Mrs. Clayton, Tim and Benny's mother, and I'd like to speak Camp to... Kachua. Can't you hear me? I want to speak to either Tim or Hello. Benny... Hello. This is Mrs. Clayton. I'd like to speak to... We well, hung up. Huh. Well, it must have been a bad connection. I could hear him perfectly well, but he couldn't seem to hear me. We'll dial them again. Maybe you'll get a better connection this time. Oh... <laughs> I guess it's silly anyway. They're probably having supper. How's the soup? Oh, good. Hey, I think I'll call Pete and Alma Rhodes. What for? Oh, just let them know we're back. No reason. I guess we've both got telephonitis tonight. <laughs> okay. Oh, let me talk to Alma before you hang up. Oh, the soup isn't really as good as I make, but <laughs> it's the spot. Hello? Hi, Alma. It's Harry. We're back. Hello? It's Harry, Alma. Can't you hear me? I don't know why people... I guess our phone's out of order. Same thing? She couldn't hear you? Yeah. I'll report it to the phone company tomorrow from the office. Oh, what if somebody tries to call us tonight? I'll be very glad the phone's out of order. Devils. Hey, Grace, did you turn the water off? I can't hear you. Wait till I get my robe on. Did you turn the water off, Grace? Turn the water off? Of course I didn't. Well, it is off. Oh, it can't be. The, the shut-off valve is clear down in the basement. I haven't even been down there since we got home. Neither of you. Well, look at it. No water. It must be out of order. How can the water be out of order? Unless there's a broken main somewhere. Well, then there must be a broken main somewhere. Why don't you call a water company and... Oh. Yeah. The phone's out of order. And I'm going to be out of order myself if I don't get some coffee pretty soon. Well, there must be... Oh. Well, there ought to be enough ice cubes in the refrigerator to melt down so we can make a couple of cups of coffee. Hey, you know what? You're a genius. Oh, Harry. Well, now what? Everything's melted. Every single thing in the freezer. Oh, oh, just look at that mess. Oh, for Pete's sake, what next? Oh, that refrigerator isn't even a year old yet. And... Wait a minute. No lights. We've got no electricity. But that's... What's going on here, Harry? I don't know. But I don't see how everything could go out of order. I mean, all at the same time. Well, look, I don't have time to check it out. I've got a train to catch. I'll get some coffee later. Well, what am I going to do all day in this house where nothing works? Go down the block and see Alma. She'll give you some coffee, and you can use her phone to call. I'll see who it is. No, no, no. You'll miss your train. I'll go. You had a look at your hair this morning? Huh? Oh. Okay, you go. But I won't be a second. It's probably Alma anyway. I'm coming. I'm coming. Good morning. You're Mr. Clayton, aren't you? Harry Clayton? Yes. My name's Handy. May I come in? Well, what is it? I was just leaving. I, uh, uh, I understand you've got some trouble here. Yeah, we've got trouble, all right. Are, are you from the phone people or the water or the electricity? They're all out. <laughs> As a matter of fact... How did you uh, find out? Did somebody report it? It was reported in, in a way. May I come in? I guess you'd better. Uh, Grace, I, I, I was just getting ready to leave. If I miss the 812, I can't get another one until, oh, half hour or so. I think it just might be better if you didn't leave just yet. Is it Alma? Did you tell her... Oh. Uh, Grace, this is Mr. Uh, Handy. Uh, I'm very happy to know you, Mrs. Clayton. Mr. Uh, Handy's from the... Uh, where are you from? I came just as soon as I could get here when we heard about the uh, the trouble. 
If you'll just... Oh, oh, are you going to fix things? You know, nothing's working. The water or the telephone or... And, and my freezer is just a mess. Well, wait a minute. You can't be here to fix all three of them. Which company are you from? The fact is, I'm going to ask you both to come with me. We can get this whole thing straightened out in no time at all. If... Come with you? Well, that doesn't make sense. Oh, it does, really. I suppose it sounds a little strange, but... Come with you where? Good question. It's a... It's a matter of computer malfunction. You know how things can get fouled up. You can't really blame the computer, I suppose. It must have been improper programming or... I don't know. It's never happened before, and I'm very sure that it will not... What good's it going to do our coming with you? I don't know anything about computers. I'm a copywriter, advertising copy. Nothing to do with that, actually. If you'll just... Come with you where? I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to tell you that. Not just yet. I think you'd better just leave, Mr. Handy. You... you won't come with me? We will not. If you'd tell us where you want to take us, and maybe... Forget it, Grace. Oh, dear. I'm sure I don't know what's going to happen now. You're going to get out of this house and off this property. That's what's going to happen. All right, all right. I just hope... All right, I'm, I'm going... Now. I think you missed your train, Harry. So? I'll take the next one. And if that kook shows up again, don't let him in. Archie, let me have a cup of coffee, will you? I haven't even had my first cup this morning. I'm dying. Did you ever hear of anybody getting a free ride on the Long Island Railroad? <laughs> You're looking at the man who did it. The conductor walked right past me. Had the ticket out there ready for him to punch, and he walked right past me. Hey, hey uh, how about that coffee? If I don't get it soon, I... Archie. Archie. Archie, you act as if you can't even see me. Anybody home? Alma? It's Grace. Where are you? Oh, hi, Alma. You know, we tried to call you last night, but our phone seems to be out of order. Now, I could have sworn I heard that screen door slam. Hey! Oh, it's me. I slammed the door. Oh, those rotten kids. I swear, one of these days... Alma, come on. Don't play games. Are you... Are you... Are you sore at me or something? What's the matter with you, Alma? Rhodes Hardware. Pete, it's me. I'm sorry to bother you with the store. Oh, that's okay. No business yet. What's up? Well, it's those neighbor kids again. Oh, boy. What have they been up to now? Well, they were... Well, they slammed the kitchen door. It, it must have been the kids. Alma, it was me. I slammed the door. Uh, I don't want to scare you, but are you sure there's nobody in the house, honey? Oh, there couldn't be. I came right out to the kitchen and there's nobody here. Alma, what are you trying to do to okay, me? Okay, okay. I'll speak to their parents again this evening. Any sign of Grace and Harry yet? Oh, no. And I'm getting kind of worried. I know they wanted to get home yesterday. Harry was supposed to go back to work this morning. Alma, listen well, to me, maybe Alma. Maybe they decided to take an extra few days or something. I wouldn't worry. Uh, you lock the doors now, you hear? Yes, I will. Bye. Alma, please. Oh, I wish I knew what happened to Grace and Harry. Alma, I'm here. I'm here in the kitchen with you. Well, I guess they can take care of themselves. Helen. Helen, I'm back. Listen, will you knock it off with the typing and look at me for Pete's sake? I'm Harry Clayton. I've been here almost three years and you... Damn it, look at me. Stop that typing. All right, if you won't talk to me, maybe Dave Green will. Listen, Dave... I want to know what's going on here. I walk into the office where I've been working for three years what and she will... devil? Helen, why did you open this door? Open the door? Now, Mr. Green, I've been sitting right here. Funny. Okay, get Mr. Bradwell on the phone. Tell him it's about the ocean mist account. Listen, Dave. 
I've had just about enough of this. How could it blow open? There's not a breath of air in this place. Come on, Dave. A joke's a joke. You know perfectly well I'm standing right here beside you. Yes. Oh, how's it going, Ernie? Listen, about that ocean mist copy. I know, but Clayton hasn't come in yet this morning. Dave, for Pete's sake! Oh, he'll be here all right. He's a dependable guy. Let's give him another day. He may have had some kind of car problem, you know. He's fast. We won't lose any time waiting. Don't worry. He'll show up. Or he'll be good and sorry. Is it possible for a man suddenly to become invisible to the people around him? Unable to make himself either seen or heard? Well, it certainly isn't ordinary, but since it seems to be happening to Harry Clayton and to his wife Grace, it must be possible. Imagine the feeling of total isolation. Imagine the loneliness. I do hope you'll be able to hear me when I return shortly with Act Two. quiet lives of Grace and Harry Clayton. They find, first of all, that their telephone, water, and electric services have been cut off. And then, worse still, far, far worse, they find that they themselves have been cut off. Cut off completely from the comfort and warmth of human interchange. Other people, friends and strangers alike, are unable either to see or hear them. Grace... Grace, honey, what are you doing sitting out here on the curb? Grace, what is it? What's happened? Alice is mad at me. She won't speak to me. Just, just act like I'm not even there. Well, what, what are you doing sitting out here on the curb? Oh, I locked myself out. I took my purse, but I can't find my key in it. And I can't get in the house. Uh, <laughs> you say Alma acts as if you're not even there? Mm, yes, and I, and I think it's me. And I told her so. The same <gasps> thing's happening to me, Grace. Alma's mad at you, too? No, I mean, people don't see me or hear me when I speak. <laughs> the counterman at the diner, Helen, the receptionist at the office, even Dave Green, the copy chief. <laughs> Why should everybody be mad at us all of a sudden? I don't think they are, Grace. I think they really can't see or hear us. Really? Can't? Oh. oh. But that is impossible. Is it? I would have said so yesterday. I'd have laughed at the idea, but today... It's happening. I... Well, I don't see how it's possible. If it's happening, it's got to be possible. Uh, let's go in the house. Uh, I haven't got them. Your keys? They're right there in your hand. Not the front or back door keys. How could they have got lost off the ring? Oh, they must be there. No, 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 no. They're gone. I had them last night. We got in all right last night. Dear, should we try a window? Now they're all locked. Hey, I still got the car keys. We can what? Go to a restaurant? No, we can't order. I'm not hungry anyway. Are you? No, no, I'm not. Now that you mention it. Well, we've got to go somewhere. We can't just stand here. Harry, let's uh, go and. And try Pete and Alma again. I can tell you right now, it won't work. And it's not an experience I enjoy being treated as though I don't exist. But, but we could try once more, couldn't we? If it'll make you feel better, sure. Alma? Out in the kitchen, Pete. You hear anything from Grace and Harry? No, not a word. Hey, what's that smell so good? Oh, just plain old stew. Love it. Mm. Well, how was your day? So-so. 
better than yours from the way you sound. Now, I can't get Grace and Harry off my mind. Well, it, it is funny they didn't call us something if they decided to stay over at the lodge for a while. I just... Now, now don't laugh at me, Pete. I almost felt as if Grace was here. Hmm? Right here in the house with me. Oh, come on now. Anna. I could have sworn. You know, right after that screen door slammed. Honestly. I could have sworn I heard her call my name. I bet you a quarter if we called, they'd be right there in the dining room at the lodge having a drink before dinner. Oh, could we? Could we what? Call the lodge and see if they're still there. Well... Sure, if you want to. Sure, why not? I've got the number written down here somewhere. Uh, uh, oh, oh, yes, here it is. Two, four, six. Hey, uh, keep your eye on the stew. Don't let it stick. A pleasure. Tastes about ready to me. Is this a poke at Lodge? Uh, I'd like to speak to either Mr. or Mrs. Harry Clayton, please. Is that quarter bed on? Quarter bay? Oh, oh, okay. You win if they're there, and I win if they... <laughs> yes? Oh, I see. Well, can you tell me when they checked out? Yesterday morning. Early yesterday morning. Uh, yes, well, all, all right. Thank you. Well, you heard what he said. Yeah, but, well, but it's a long drive. They most likely decided to stop at a motel last night. Okay, but why aren't they back now? They've had the whole day off to drive half the distance from a poker if they stopped at a motel last night. I don't know, Alma. Hey, what do you want to bet that's Grace and Harry right now? I'll go see. Oh, if they just got in, tell them there's plenty of stew here for four. Anybody here? Is it them, Pete? The rotten kids. Who was it? Wasn't it Grace and Harry? Kids next door ringing doorbells again, I guess. There wasn't anybody there. Pete, I've got the funniest feeling. Serve the stew, Alma. What you need is some good, solid the food. The funniest feeling, like they were here. There must be something we could have done, Harry. Something to make Pete realize that it was us ringing the doorbell? I don't know what. It's, it's the most frustrating thing that ever... Come on, get in the car, Grace. I don't know what's happened to us, but I do know that things don't go the way you expect them to anymore. I'm scared, Harry. Scared. So am I. Ah, the car goes. That's something, anyway. Harry? Yes? Can we drive up to camp... Catchawa, see the boys? You sure you want to? Oh, yes. What if they can't see us or hear us like everybody else? What if they don't even know we're there? But surely, surely the boys. After all, we can see each other. Yes, but we don't know why. All right, we can try it, I guess. We've only got about a half tank full of gas, though. Well, there'll be plenty of gas stations along the way. So? For one thing, I don't have much money, six, seven dollars. And I don't know any way to get any more. And if I had a thousand dollars in my pocket, how would I go about getting a gas station attendant who doesn't even know I'm there to put gas in the car? I don't know what to do, Pete. They didn't stay on at the lodge in a poker. They checked out yesterday morning. Well, they could have decided to go somewhere else. I mean, is it really any of our business? Pete, they're our friends. Okay, okay. I don't like the looks of it either. I think we ought to call the police. Now, look, Alma, you don't call the police and say you have a feeling something's wrong. They don't operate that way. They'd write you off as a crackpot. Well, maybe they would. Maybe I am a crackpot, oh. but I do have this feeling. Well, they can write it off if they want to, but I can't. Well, all right, all right. If you feel that strongly about it, I'll call them. No, I'm the crackpot. I'll do the calling. Uh, what do I do, Pete? Just dial the operator? Five, one, six. Uh -huh. Zero, 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 zero. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Now, if you'd rather I talk to them. No, 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 no. I I'll do it. Hello? Police headquarters? I want to report what... 
what I believe is a missing person. Two missing persons. Their names? Harry and Grace Clayton. Yes, they live at 145 Hillside Avenue here in Newton. My name is Alma Rhodes. I live just down the street from them at 141 Hillside. Well, you see, they've been away on vacation. They stayed at a Pocot Lodge in Pocot, Maine. Well, they were supposed to be back home sometime yesterday. And, well, they haven't come back. Yes, we tried the lodge. Yesterday morning. Yes, the clerk said they checked out yesterday morning. Well, I suppose it doesn't sound like much to you, but... Oh. Oh, yes, that's what I thought, too. Well, will you let us know? No matter what you find out? Oh, thank you, officer. That's very good of you. There, you see, Pete? He said I was right to call. I don't think this station's open, Harry. Well, we're running pretty low on gas. Maybe they don't lock their pumps. <gasps> Isn't there a light in that window around there on the side? Huh? Oh, yeah. Looks like it, huh? Okay, I'll go around, and if there's somebody there, I'll offer to buy $6 worth of gas. And if there isn't anybody, or if he doesn't hear me, I'll just help myself. Well, I don't know whether to come with you or, or wait here. Wait here. I won't be long. Hello there. I'd like to buy some gasoline. Six dollars worth of gas if you're open for business. If you don't sell me six dollars worth, I'm going to steal a whole tank full. Okay, if that's the way you want it. Did you talk to him? Yeah, sure I talked to him. He didn't answer me, of course, but I talked to him. He may have been asleep. He was leaning back in a swivel chair with his eyes shut. Well, didn't you shake him or anything? No. No, I, uh... I didn't want to touch him. Hmm? Now, wait a minute. Let me see if I can make this pump work. Ah, it works. It turns itself off when it's full. Harry? Yes? Why didn't you want to touch him? I don't know. I've been thinking about that. I I haven't felt like touching anybody all day. On the train earlier, I kept dodging and ducking so I wouldn't touch the other passengers. Why? Well, I guess I... I don't really know. Maybe I was afraid that they wouldn't feel it if I touched them. But you picked up the pump hose and put it in the tank. I mean, I mean, if you could do that... Yeah, I know, I know. Go, Harry. As soon as the tank's full. See, the gas hose is a thing. I'm afraid to touch people. I'm afraid to. I'll get it. It could be the police. I'll get it anyway, Alma. You've already done your part. Hello. Yes, Mr. Rhodes. Oh, yes, Sergeant. It was my wife who called you earlier. Well, I don't know exactly. I'd say uh, early 40s. Maybe she's in her late 30s. Oh, Lord. Well, no, no, that doesn't seem likely. Well, yes, yes, I guess we could do that. About uh, 20 minutes. Yes. And uh, thank you very much, Sergeant. Have they found them? Well, uh, they don't know yet. There was an accident yesterday afternoon just the Manhattan side of the Cross Island cutoff. Oh, no. Now, no. Now, now, wait, please, Alma. They, they don't know yet. Two people, a man and a woman, were hurt. But they didn't have any identification on them. Now, that doesn't seem likely, does it? I mean, that Grace and Harry would travel without identification? Are they... I mean, They're still are alive, they... but the, 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 it looks bad. Oh. They want us to uh, come over to Union Hospital and uh, make... An identification, if we can. Harry, are you sure you made the right turn back there? I've driven this road a hundred times. 
Harry. Huh? You remember that man who came to see us this morning? What was his name? Uh, Handy. Mr. Handy. Yes. Yes. I wish we'd gone with him. Wherever it was he wanted us to go. Maybe. It didn't seem like a very good idea at the time, though. But at least he could see us and hear us. Yeah, you're right. Come to think of it, he's the only one who's been able to all day. Harry. Yes? Do you want to know what I think has happened to us? All right. I think we're dead. The most perplexing mystery of all, death. Philosophers have devoted lifetimes to puzzling over it, and the best they've come up with is pure surmise. It is, to be sure, the cessation of life as we know it, but few of us can believe that it represents the absolute end. There must be a continuation. And in the nature of this continuation lies the mystery. Are we nearing a solution? Well, one solution, perhaps. We'll see when I return shortly with Act Three. and Harry Clayton have apparently ceased to exist. Although they move about among people as they've always done, these people are now quite unaware of their presence. Grace has come to believe that they are actually dead and that the mysterious thing that has happened to them is life after death. They're on their way now to see their two boys, Tim and Benny, at Camp Kachawa. They suddenly feel a great need to do this. No, I don't think so. Don't think what, Harry? That we're dead. I mean, would it be like this? Is this, just this, what it's all about? Well, then what is it, if it isn't death? I don't know. Could it be some kind of an, of an in-between thing? I mean, like... Like purgatory or, or limbo or, or... I don't know what you'd call it. But but could it be something like that? It could be anything. It could be... Oh, I make a right here, don't I? Mm. Won't the boys be in bed by now? I don't care. We can go into their cabins and... and, and well, we can look at them at least. Nobody can keep us from doing that. No. For the last time. Don't you, Grace? Yes. You uh, stay here in the waiting room, Alma. I'll go in and see them. I ought to go in there with you. If I weren't... What would be the point? In case it should be Harry and Grace, it wouldn't help matters for both of us to have to see them. Pete? Yes. It... It is Grace and Harry? Yes. Are they... They're still alive. Doctor says he doesn't see how it's possible, but they're both still alive. Is there any hope at all? Well, there's always hope. I'm quoting the doctor. I, I don't understand about no identification. Yeah, yeah, neither does anyone else. There just wasn't anything in his pockets or her bag either. Could they have been robbed? I don't think there was time. Look, I told the doctor we'd wait, but if you'd rather... No. Think... No, I, I want to stay. The only thing is, I, I think I'm going to cry. Now, you go ahead. Maybe I will, too. The office? Why are you stopping at the office? Well, maybe the council will talk to us. Well, he might. Just because we... You know better, Harry. Yeah, okay. But anyway, we don't know what cabin Tim and Benny are in. 
They must have a record of it somewhere in the office. Jim wrote that they have a little cabin all to themselves. <laughs> These prices, they should have room service. Uh, if, uh, if you're right, what about the boys? I don't know. My sister, I guess, and her husband, Alice, and, and Fred, they'll be good to them, and, and... Oh, Harry. Honey, we don't know. Not yet. We're not sure. Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, we're Mr. and Mrs. Clayton, Tim and Benny's parents, yes, and... Uh, Clara there. Yeah, this is John Finch. Ah, I'm sorry to bother you while you're on the phone, he but... He doesn't hear you, Harry. Hey, Clara, how's it going? Yeah, I'm stuck here tonight, you know, just waiting for the phone to ring or whatever. If you could just take a second or two and tell us which cabin Tim and Benny Clayton we'll are in, we... We'll have to find uh... it for ourselves, Harry. He doesn't know we're here. Right, let's check this filing this cabinet. So long as I got this place to my... What the devil? Hey, just hang on a minute, Clara. Health charts, these look like. Who did that? Now, wait, wait a minute. Who's in here? This could be it. Yes, Arnold Barlow. Yes, yes, here it is. Clayton, Timothy, and Benjamin. Oh. Cabin number seven. Oh, wait a minute. Put that folder back in there. Oh, Lord. Let's go, Grace. Clara? Hey, Clara, something screwy is going on here. Can you read the number on the door there? It's so dark. Yes, this is it. Number seven. Are you... Are you going to try to talk to them, Harry? We'll see. There must be a light switch somewhere. Oh, oh here. Oh, they look... Oh, they look like angels when they're asleep. <laughs> All kids do. You don't have to whisper. Oh. Habit, I guess. You want to try to wake them up? No. No, I think I'd rather not. Look at that tan on oh. Benny. Oh. Oh. He's been living in the sun. Oh. Yeah, I think it's bleached his hair some, too. Oh, Tim's got a big scrape place right on the end of his nose. Oh, Harry. I think we'd better get out of here, Grace. Not just yet, please. It, it might be the last. Can't we stay for just a little while? All right. We'll have to go eventually. Benny. Oh, Benny's been biting his nails again. Mr. Handy, will you come in now? Yes, sir. I'm sure you know why you're here, Mr. Handy. The Clayton situation, of course. I'd just like to point out, though, that if the computer hadn't malfunctioned... We managed for a good many hundreds of years before we had the computer, you know. Yes, sir. The situation as it stands is quite intolerable. We've lost them. Lost them? They wandered away. Drove their car, I believe. And the computer, even now in good working order, hasn't been able to locate them. Oh, Dear. Yes. You made contact this morning and then let them get away. Isn't that true? They wouldn't come with me, sir. They absolutely refused. Well, it's still your assignment. M my assignment? Go and find them, Mr. Handy. Go and find Grace and Harry Clayton. But if the computer can't find... Then you must. Pete, what did the doctor say? They're gone, Alma. Oh, Pete. It's a blessing, really. They were so... They were just too badly banged up. Brain damage in both cases and... Just too much. <laughs> Well, we've got to call Grace's sister. You want to, or shall I? No. Oh, I'll do it. Now what? Are we out of gas? No. 
Not according to the gauge. Damn thing just stopped, that's all. What are we going to do now, Harry? I don't know. Just sit here, I guess. Or get out and walk in the fog. I don't think it matters much. But we can't just leave the car sitting here in the road like this, can we? How long since we've seen a car, Grace? Well, not for a long time. Listen. For what? Just listen. Do you hear anything? Anything at all? Well, it's... It's... It's nighttime. A foggy night. Nobody... No frogs. No crickets. Absolutely nothing. It's scary. With the fog and everything. Yeah. Especially everything. Mr. Clayton! Mrs. Clayton! Yes! We're here. We're right here. Do you think it's Mr. Handy, Harry? I don't know. Somebody knows we're alive, at least. Uh... Or that we're not. Is it you, Mr. Handy? Yes, it's me. Don't go away. Oh, my goodness, what a time I had finding you. You shouldn't have left the house. Well, we couldn't get back in. We both lost our keys some way. Yes, well, it doesn't matter now, does it? Mr. Handy, are we dead? Yes, you are now. The computer's been fixed. What's a computer got to do with it? You see, when the truck crashed across the divider and hit your car on the way home from Maine, you know, just at that moment, the computer malfunctioned. It didn't record your deaths. So, well, of course, you weren't properly dead or properly alive either, and all sorts of things went haywire. We're really terribly sorry. So that's how it was. It seems so strange. We, we didn't... Well, we didn't even notice. It was instantaneous, or would have been, except for that miserable computer. You've been in a coma while we got it repaired. So, what happens now? Well, you aren't going to make trouble about coming along with me this time, are you? Oh, no, no, not this time. Oh, good, that's fine. Then everything's all right. Except, we have two children, you know, Mr. Handy. But they're provided for, aren't they? Well, we'll... we'll never see them again. What do you mean you'll never see them again? We're dead. They're... they're alive. Well, but they'll die, of course. Why? Eventually. Everybody does. You know that. Oh. Well, at least we get to see them once more. But to wait a lifetime. No, my dear. It'll hardly seem longer than drawing in a breath and breathing it out again. We're dealing with eternity here, you know. Well, perhaps that's the way it happens. Perhaps it isn't. All we can do is pass the story along to you as it came to us. Each of us, whether he is aware of it or not, has his own thoughts upon death and what follows it. Based on what he has witnessed, what he feels in his heart, and... Uh, Maybe on what he has heard on Mystery Theater. I'll be back shortly. There is no way to give you a follow-up on what happened after the end of our story. We are not privy to that information. We like to believe, and do believe, that all went well and that we've given you as happy an ending as a story about death can have. Our cast included Augusta Dabney, Robert Dryden, Joan Shea, Nat Polan, and Robert Maxwell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Where do you feel ill? What, is stomach? But your head? Sit down on the rocker, you look... Ghastly. Laura, maybe, maybe if, I, if, if I had a brandy. Yeah, I'll telephone Paul Schilder. No, 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 please. He's, he's, he's operating at seven. I'm, I'm just going to chill or something. You wipe your face with a wet cloth and I'll be right up. I heard them. Every word. They're coming back. Killers. Oh, what shall I do? Is it too late to call the police and turn in the money? Maybe not. 
but give up $80,000 because I'm afraid of a pair of hoodlums? What have I got to be afraid of? Say they confront me. I, I, I tell them that I haven't got the money. Would they risk shooting me? No, I won't give up that money. I won't. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. I hope you enjoy this episode of CBS 